In 1988, Justin Rutabiyama was a mother of five girls and one boy who was one year old and four months. Nobo Biarugaba was the answer to her prayers for a male child. At the time, her husband, engineer Henry Rutabiyama, was the chief engineer of Uganda Airlines. As a result, Rutabiyama, who was a housewife, was a frequent flyer. In October 1988, she traveled with her infant son for a short holiday in London. I used to go very, uh, to travel a lot. My husband would, would felt that I had many children, so he wanted me always to go to have a break. Rutabiyama was scheduled to return to Entebbe on Uganda Airlines flight QU-775, flying out of Gatwick Airport in London on Sunday, 16th October, 1988. I felt I couldn't travel without first going to church. I went straight to the office where they sell sacramentals, if you are a Catholic. Somebody who is a Catholic will understand. So I bought scapulars, I bought many, many statues, you know, things I could bring to my friends. Eh? The priest was so nice, he, said, he blessed me and prayed for me for a safe journey and what, you know, I wondered, eh, you know, Bazungu don't usually have that kind of time, <laughs> but he had time with me and that, you know, made me, I said, oh my God, I'm going to have a safe journey, I'm going to go where, eh? From the church, she proceeded to the airport to check in and wait for the boarding call. There was a lady who was expecting, she was, you know, me, I had a, a push chair for my baby thing, so I said, bring your luggage, put it on the, so that I can push it for you. But what was significant, this lady, I had never liked her. I, you know, because she had befriended my, my friend's husband. But that time, something told me, you know, this is not your business. You can't just go judging people and what. So I, and after I had done that, I felt so good in, my, in myself. At about 10.45 local time, the passengers, most of whom were Ugandans, boarded the flight. So I saw people I wanted to sit with them. Eh? And I, I sat with them because I even expected them to help me with the baby. When the, the hostess came, she said, no, 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 Mrs. Rutabiyama, you can't sit at the back. You have a baby. This, the space here is limited. Let me take you to the front where there is space for the baby. She was called Sister Nachans. During the one-hour flight to Rome Fiumicino Airport, when her baby fell asleep, Rutabiyama put him in the seat next to her and secured him with a seat belt. She began praying her rosary and her routine night prayers. Her plan was to sleep during the flight from Rome to Entebbe. Now, the descent into Rome, we noti I noticed the plane was going as if it's going to land. Of course, they had already announced we are landing, but again, I saw it, the print was going up. I said, what is it? And of course there were other people, we looked at each other. Eh? And again, it tried to run, again it went up. Three times, then people started mumbling. Eh? But me, I just said, God is in control, just relax. Rutabiyama says she felt no fear at the time, and even when the aircraft hit the roof of a building, she was not aware of it. I thought it was the normal thing, turbulence or something was... No, only when I opened my eyes like this, as we are sitting, I saw fire. Fire, you know, sparks eh, of fire. That means we had already crashed. Everything was silent. By that time, I was all by myself in just a piece of... The plane had already broken into pieces. Me, I was sitting like uh, normally in the prairie with my city belt on. By that time, Rutabiyama was probably in shock. She did not remember that her baby was trapped in the seat next to her. All of a sudden, I heard cries, screaming, you know, moaning uh, down. So when I looked like this, as I'm sitting here, you look down here. So that's when I realized I, I did my belt. But I just jumped down, eh? it was near the ground. 
when I reached down, that's when I remembered. I said, oh my God, where's my baby? I had a child crying. Was in, a, you know, in the same place, but hanging. I think he were, he, the chair had overturned. It was hot, it was fire. But I said, I'm not giving up my baby to die. So I went first, I got hold of him, and the baby also was, well, you know, suffocating, but we held each other. But when I pulled like this, I had the thing was just going to collapse over me. So I realized he was still with the seat belt. And then I just saw the baby had suffocated. Because you see, we were by the seaside, so the wind, wind would blow. And then you can see, then when it, it, it goes, you know, the, the wave goes back, then the fire goes towards you. She remembers that the rescue services appeared within a few minutes, but by that time, baby Nobo was dead and the fire had done its damage. Because when I was running away, I, could, I, I felt stepping in on dead bodies. In fact, if I had remained at the back, I would have died because everyone at the back died. Rutabiyama spent a week and a few days in a hospital in Rome. She and other survivors were visited by a team from Uganda, led by Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda, who was the Minister of Transport at the time. She returned to Entebbe on the flight that brought back the remains of those who had perished in the crash. I first of all, I had to go, go, come down that I had lost. This was my only son. After five girls, now the son dies. So that was a decision I had to make. I said, now, since you have survived, your children are waiting for you, and you will be able to look after them. She says it was her faith in God that helped her overcome the trauma she had experienced, and she is still very religious even today. Everyone should make friends with God. You know, once you were a friend of God, and you know that he's the one who does. Nothing can happen to you without him. I knew that that child was in heaven. So that was the, my strongest what, consolation. Over the years, Rutabiyama had another son. She says she never developed a phobia for flying, even after the horrific incident. Me, I have traveled and again traveled with my family with my children, you see that those pictures I showed you. And my daughters are married also in the UK, whenever they, they are having babies, of course I have to go and assist them. I've lived a full life. Eh? I work out, I go for exercise every day. I eat what I know is good. Rutabiyama has seven children and 11 grandchildren. She is two months shy of 70 years and is about to celebrate 50 years in marriage although her husband is now bedridden. Gillian Nantume, NTV, tonight. This is me.